Oh. Okay, let's see there. Good evening, Temple of Faith. Good evening, Dr. Johnson. Uh, good evening, Deaconess Odister over in Elberton, Georgia. Good evening, Cherry, Riverdale, Georgia. Good evening, Deaconess Clayton, uh, Eprint, 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 Eprint. Good evening, Kimberly Miles Cameron. Good evening, Sister Janie Miles Walker. Good evening, um, Deacon Uncle John Miles. Good evening, Deacon Clay. Look, it's hot in this building because I just got here about 10 minutes ago and the air uh, has to cool down. So you may see me wiping profusely or I'm going to stand over here where the air is. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stand right under the air. So give me just a second. Give me just a second. Let me reposition that. Yeah, that's going to be much better for me. Yeah, that that's good. Yeah, I'm right under the air now, so that's what. Hold on just a second. Let us begin our wonderful Wednesday night Bible study with prayer. Eternal God, our Father, our Savior, our provider, our sustainer, our keeper, our all and all. We lift you up tonight. We magnify you. We glorify you tonight. Uh, open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits so that we may receive the word of God tonight. May we be challenged by it. Or may we be moved by it. May we be motivated by it. May we grow by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Uh, it's good to be back in the sanctuary on a Wednesday night. Um, wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. We welcome you. I'm here and not in the pulpit because um, I need the air to cool down in the building. So uh, tonight we're gonna we've been dealing with uh, this series on emotions. How many of you been blessed since we've been teaching this powerful Bible study series on how to manage your emotions? We began this journey uh, through the Book of Psalms. We've been moving in and out of Psalms, but last week. Um, through a meditation moments, God gave me First Peter for tonight. Tonight, I want to deal with anxiety. I want to deal with how to handle your anxiety. Uh, how to handle your anxiety. I want to give you some statistics about anxiety. Uh, I did a lot of research. I'm going to get to the biblical scripture, but to lay a background for you, kind of like a lawyer building a case, I want to give you some facts about anxiety. Uh, I want to talk about, give you some facts and statistics about anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorders. Um, anxiety and de depression. It's not uncommon for someone with an anxiety disorder to also suffer from depression or vice versa. Listen to this. Nearly one half of those diagnosed with depression are also diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. So the first disorder with anxiety, uh, it's called generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder. Short abbreviation GAD, G-A-D. Generalized anxiety disorder. GAD affects 6.8 million adults or 3.1% of the U.S. population. Yet only 43.2% are receiving treatment. Women are twice as likely to be affected as men. Look at that. The anxiety is double for a woman versus a man. GAD often co-concurs with major con depression. 6.8 million adults or 3.1% of this nation's population, yet only 43.2% get treatment. So that's generalized anxiety disorder. Panic disorder, PD, panic disorder. Panic disorder affects 6 million adults or 2.7% of the U.S. population. Women, once again, are twice as likely as men to be affected. 
social anxiety disorder. That's when you don't like being around people, or you freak out around people. Social dis social hey Trevor Combs, good evening. My barber gave me this hat. He's in Bible study. Social anxiety disorder affects 15 million adults, 7.1% of the U.S. population. Social anxiety disorder is equally between men and women beginning around age 13. According to a study, 36% of people with social anxiety experience symptoms 10 or more years before they seek help. So this is why you will see the anxiety level being uh, so out of hand. Stress. Everyone experiences stress and anxiety at one time or another. The difference between them is that stress is a response to a threat situation. Anxiety is a reaction to the stress. Let me tell you all that again. Stress. Everyone experiences stress and anxiety at one time or another. The difference between them is that stress is a response to a threat in a situation. Anxiety is a reaction to the stress. So anxiety is something that affects people from all races, all backgrounds, all economic situations. So tonight we want to take a biblical report. Now let me explain something to you. There's a medical side to anxiety that people should get help. You should talk to a psychologist. You should talk to a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with it. So there's a medicinal part. There's a medical part to anxiety that we need to get medical help. There's nothing wrong. Look at that. There's only 43.2% of people that suffer from anxiety getting kind of treatment. There are some things medically you cannot shake it by yourself. There are some things medically that, yes, you can pray, but you need help too. Jesus says prayer and fasting, a combination. So tonight I want to talk about how to handle anxiety from a spiritual standpoint. From a spiritual standpoint standpoint. Okay? Get your Bibles. Turn to 1 Peter the 5th chapter. Hey, Marguerite! 1 Peter the 5th chapter. 1 Peter the 5th chapter, verse number uh, verse number 6. Verse number 6. Verse number six. Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares you. That's the focus. First Peter, the fifth chapter, verse number seven. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I'm talking about how to deal with, with, with anxiety from a spiritual standpoint, not a medicinal, because there's a medicinal side. From a spiritual side point, when we feel anxiety, we need to turn to God. Woo! When we feel anxious moments, we need to turn to God. When we feel stressed out, we need to turn to God. When life becomes unbearable, too much to handle, at that particular moment in our situation, we need to turn to God. Peter, now you're talking about somebody who dealt with anxiety. Remember, Peter denied Jesus three times. Peter cut a man's ear off in the garden of Gethsemane when they came to Malchus, the high priest's servant. Jesus, Peter cut the ear off. Peter, Peter, when, when he thought they were going to die in a storm, he asked Jesus, could I get out the boat? If that's you, let me walk to you. Peter loved Jesus. Peter followed Jesus. But Peter had moments of anxiety. I don't care how much you come to church. I don't care how much you love God. I don't care how much we tithe, we give offerings, we sing, we pray, we preach. You will experience anxiety. Saved people have moments of anxiety. Saved people have moments of stress. Saved people have moments of uncertainty, doubt, worry. All of us tonight have been anxious at some point. All of us. I want to go back now and read again uh, from the statistics that I was giving you about anxiety. Look at this. Everyone experiences stress and anxiety at one time or another. The difference between them is that stress is a response to a threat in a situation. Anxiety is a reaction to the stress. So stress leads us to anxiety. 
Stress leads. Hey, Melissa, Dana Scott, it was so good to see you for a few moments when I was in Washington. You got some of that money you were throwing away in that 360 thing you were doing, Melissa? You got some of that cheese? Uh, so, so stress unmanaged turns into anxiety. When I first took my dr driving test in Washington, Georgia, I was so anxious I failed the test. Every time I passed that that um, that state patrol post that's closed now on Highway 44 coming into the city of Washington, I, I know my grandma said, you dummy, I forgot to stop at the stop sign on the campus of the state patrol. We hadn't even made it to the street. Hadn't even made it to the street. So I guess you threw away the money. I was anxious about this. So Melissa, you threw away the money. So what happens is, if we don't control our stress level, the stress turns into anxiety. It turns into to anxiety. Sometimes you're innocent not doing nothing. You see a blue light for the police. He's going at somebody else, but because the car's behind you, you think he's at you. So then you start stressing. Then the stress turns into anxiety. Oh Lord, what I'm gonna do? You start thinking about where's my license? my insurance, blah, 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 blah. anxiety. So stress leads to anxiety. This is why who you deal with in life impacts your stress level sometimes. Oh, somebody missed your shout. Who you have in your life can impact your stress, which inevitably turns into anxiety. Let me say that again. Who you have in your life, who you deal with can impact your stress. Some of you have been in stressful marriages. Stressful relationships, stressful jobs, that stress turned into anxiety. Anxiety affects the whole body. And anxiety affects your sleep, it affects your thinking, it affects your behavior, it affects your mood. Am I talking to anybody or am I just talking to myself tonight? Am I just helping myself tonight? Anxiety affects your mood, it affects your sleep, it affects your behavior. Your appetite, your view of life. So, so from a spiritual start standpoint, Peter says here, cast, look at this, look at this. Let me read that again. First Peter, fifth chapter. First Peter, the fifth chapter. Here it is, here it is. Verse seven, cast all your anxiety on him. All. So Peter, Peter is talking from experience. Because Peter failed Jesus. So he took his anxiety and gave it to Jesus in John, the 21st chapter. I taught that. He restored me. So you need to understand the first step from a spiritual style standpoint. Take your anxiety to God. Now notice what Peter says. Cast. What was Peter by, what was Peter by profession? Peter was a fisherman. In order to catch the fish, he had to cast, hey, my, my little sister, Dr. Rachel Hamilton, he had to cast the net into the water. Now we who fish on, on boats, we cast the, the, the reel. We cast the line into the water. To cast means to throw it. Peter is telling you tonight, Melissa. He's telling you, Rachel. He's telling you, Miss Janie. He's telling you, Kimberly. Throw your anxiety to God. Woo! Throw your anxiety to God. Look at this. First Peter, fifth chapter, verse number seven. Cast all, all. Don't hold back. Everything that's causing you anxiety, throw it all at God. Look at this. Cast your and all your anxiety on Him. God can handle your anxiety tonight. God can handle your stress tonight. God can handle your depression tonight. He says, throw it, throw it. Stop. Listen to me. Stop holding on to things that are sucking the life out of you. Oh, somebody missed a shout. That's your deliverance tonight. Stop holding on to people who are sucking the life out of you. Stop holding on to ideals that are sucking the life out of you. Stop holding on to drama that's sucking the life out of you. Look at Peter, what Peter's saying. Peter's saying the first step is not to try to figure it out. The first step is not to try to solve it by yourself. The first step is not to try to find blame, blaming others or blaming yourself. He says, throw it. I want everybody on the screen tonight to type, throw it at God, cast it to God, cast it to God. Come on, put that on the screen, cast it to God, cast it to God. Come on, come on, put it up, put it up, cast it to God, 
Come on, come on, cast it. Cast it. Cast it. Come on, come on. Cast it. Cast it. Come on, cast it. Cast it. Listen to me. That's right. Throw it to God, Deaconess. Melissa, cast it. Sharon Williams Jackson, AK. Sharon, why aren't you in Orlando, Florida with all the AKs for the 70th Boule? I had AKs calling me from Orlando in Atlanta yesterday to get them tickets to an event that was going on. The, the Alphas threw a, a big bash for the AKs last night. Cast it to God, Marguerite. Some stuff you have no business trying to hold on to. Some stuff I don't have any business trying to hold. Cast it. Stress, cast it. Feeling inadequate, cast it. Worried about your retirement, cast it. Worried about your health, cast it. Worried about who loves you and who doesn't, cast it. There's some things you got to let go and cast it to God. Oh, somebody missed your shout. Somebody missed your, your, your deliverance right there. Somebody missed your breakthrough. There's some stuff is too hot for you to handle. Somebody type on the screen, it's too hot for you to handle. You know how you can be cooking something? And you want to taste it and it's so hot. Hell, you got to drop it out. Some stuff you're not meant to handle. Some things I'm not meant to handle. So cast it. Cast it. To cast means to throw. When I used to fish with Dr. Hightower from the bridge in Pensacola, Florida, the further out we threw the line with the weight. Because the weight, the lead on the line makes the line go out. The, the heavier the weight, the farther we threw it, the farther it went out into the water. The farther you throw that thing to God, you're removing it from you. Melissa, too hot to handle. Rufarius Johnson, too hot to handle. Bettina Odyssey, Deaconess, too hot to handle. Deaconess Lucille Clayton, too hot to handle. Listen, oh, by the way, Deaconess Clayton, I saw that wise, smart, elegant remark you made with my babysitter uh, online about her keeping me as a little child. <laughs> Listen, listen, the farther you get your anxiety away from you and into God's hand, the better you're going to feel. Some of you experience misery because you're holding on to what makes you anxious. Woo! Some of you are sad right now watching Bible study because you've been holding on and won't let it go. There's some things we're not smart enough to figure out. There's some booby traps that we cannot get out by ourselves, so we got to cast it. When you're feeling anxious, cast it. See, what you're going to find out if you haven't already found this out tonight, a lot of, very few people care about what you're going through. Oh, somebody missed that. Very people, very few people care about what you're going through. And that doesn't mean that they're all bad and mean people. Some people got too much going on in their lives to care about your life. You're like, some people are too anxious themselves to care about what you're going through. And then some people simply don't care what you're going through. Let me say that again. Some people simply don't care what you're going through. If you got somebody that cares about you and that supports you, that's who you need to invest in. You've already invested in enough bad people. You've already invested in enough of the wrong people. You've already given your time, your resources, to the wrong folk, begin to invest in people who care about you. Begin to invest in people who support you. I saw a great quote by my favorite actress, Viola Davis, today on Instagram. Let me see, can I go and find that quote? Because I saved it. Um, I saved it. Hold on just a second. Let me see, can I find that saved quote from her? Give me just a second. I got to remember how to use my, uh, oh, I need to go into the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to get that quote just, said. that's right, Bernice, invest in people who care and support about you. That's so true. That's so true. Let me tell you something. You really find out who cares about you when you're going through. You Look, you find out who cares about you when you're going through. I'm going to say that again. You find out who cares about you. Listen, listen to this quote. Now, we're talking about investing in people who care. Viola Davis, my favorite actress from How to Get Away with Murder. This is what Viola Davis said today on her Instagram post. She got 3.6 million views when she wrote this. P 
people who want to see you win will help you win. Remember that. Look at what she says. People who want to see you win will help you win. Remember that. You need to take an inventory of your life right now and find out how many of your people in your life right now tonight who are really trying to help you win. People who are not trying to help you win, they can be the source of your anxiety. Sometimes anxiety is self-inflicted by the choices we make. Then at other times, anxiety is inflicted by the people we have in our lives. If people are not trying to help you win, why you got them in your life? Let me say that again. If people are not trying to help you win, why you got them in your life? Peter says, cast all your anxiety. All. So, so more than one thing can make us anxious. More than one thing can cause your anxiety tonight. More than one thing can cause my anxiety tonight. Peter says, all, all. Let, let God have it all. Temple of Faith, who are here tonight in Bible study. I don't know how many people watch, because a lot of people watch after we record it. G give it all to him. Give it all to him. Peter says, cast it all. Cast it all. When you cast it towards God, you're getting it off of your back. Some of you tonight, your backs are too heavy because you're still holding on to what's causing your anxiety. Some of you, your nerves are bad because you haven't cast yet. Some of you are fidgety because you haven't cast yet. Some of you are unstable and unsure and uncertain because you haven't cast yet. Get rid of what's weighing you down. Let it go. Teddy Pendergrass, love TKO. Bumps and bruises of a two-time loser. Love TKO, gotta let it go. Let that thing go. Let that thing go. The, quit suffering in silence. Cash it to God. Quit reliving the pain. Cat, he says, cast all your anxiety. So what if you failed in the past? That don't mean you fail in the future. And I've already told you, there's a difference between being a failure and failing at something. None of you are failures tonight. All of us have failed at something, but we're not failures. Dr. Charles Stanley wrote a book over 35 years ago. Failure is not final. Peter says, 1 Peter 5th chapter, verse 7, cast all your anxieties. Look at this. Cast all your anxieties on him, on God. God can handle it. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. How big God is. If all of us, about 20 of y'all watching right now, if all of us were to cast our anxieties on the Lord, he could handle all of our anxieties at the same time. That's how big our God is. God can handle it. Somebody type on the screen, my God is big enough to handle my anxiety. Come on. Somebody type on the screen, my God is big enough to handle my anxiety. My God is big enough to handle my all. That's what I want you to put Put on the screen, my God is big enough to handle my all. My all. Peter didn't say, be selective in your casting. Peter didn't say, cast this or cast that. Peter didn't say, cast one thing Monday and something else Tuesday. No, 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 no. Peter didn't say, cast some or half or a portion. Peter says, cast it all. Cherry, my God is big enough to handle, I handle my all. Deaconess Clayton, my God is big enough to handle my all. Dr. Rachel, my God is big enough to handle my all. Thank you, Rachel, for getting it right, because I can't even read what Clayton and Bernice Easley wrote. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. My God is big enough to handle my all. He, he, some of you are suffering tonight because you haven't cast yet. I said some of you are suffering tonight, even at Bible study, because you haven't cast yet. You're trying to figure it out. Cast it out. You're trying to work it out. That's not the first step. The first step, according to the Bible, is to cast it out. <coughs> Some of you, your hearts are bleeding tonight because you haven't learned how to cast it out yet. Thank you, Bernice, because you know I'm an English major. Some of you tonight are stressed out. You're at your wit's end 
Because you hadn't learned how to cast yet. If God couldn't handle it, Peter wouldn't say cast it. Now why should we cast, according to Peter, all of our anxiety on him? Verse 7, cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Woo! Peter says, cast your anxiety, your cares on him because he cares. When someone cares about you, they don't want you living in pain. Woo! 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 When someone cares about you, they want you to live in peace. Woo! When someone cares about you, they want you to live in prosperity. Peter says, because he cares about you. God has a personal interest in you tonight, Cherry. God has a personal interest in you tonight, Uncle John. God has a personal interest in you tonight, Deaconess Clayton. Deaconess Hodge, we're praying for the Hodges tonight. We're praying for the Hodges, both husband and wife, we're praying for them. God has an interest in you. God doesn't want to see you broken. God doesn't want to see you confined to a mental institution. God doesn't want you to have a nervous breakdown. God doesn't want you to lose your sense of identity. God doesn't want you to lose your energy. I was at Kroger two nights ago shopping for groceries and fruits and veggies. And the, the people checking me out at the line, they, they, they were trying to guess my age. One of them said 35. The other one said 40. When I said 56, they were shocked. I said, I take care of my body. I take care of my mind. You need to help God take care of you sometimes. You can't go eat fat back, pork chops, fried fish, and fried chicken a whole month long, and then think you're gonna gonna, gonna uh, lose weight that month. No, 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 no. You gotta have discipline, discipline. So, 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 God doesn't want you down and depressed. He cares about you. He, Peter says, cast your care, your anxiety to him because he cares for you. Do you know why you survived everything that you've ever, that's ever happened to you? Because God cares for you. Melissa, you have good workout discipline. Look, the reason you survived every anxious moment in your life, God cares about you. You got to find the willpower to quit putting yourself in purposeful, stressful situations by your choices. It, Peter says, God cares. You're welcome, Melissa. God cares about you. God is interested in you. You are important to God. You're the apple of God's eye. God created you. God has an interest in you. God wants the best for you. So cast your cat because he cares. This is, Peter ain't talking about nobody's behavior right now. He's not talking about sin. He's not talking about imperfections. He's not talking about any of that. He's talking about casting and caring. Woo! Somebody put that on the screen tonight. Casting and caring. Now remember, I'm not talking about the psychological disorders that I introduced the Bible study about. I'm talking about a spiritual approach to it. Because if you need medicinal help, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with talking to a psychologist. Nothing wrong with talking to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm talking about a spiritual thing. Peter says, cast because he cares. Let me tell you how much... Hey, Tammy, I didn't know you were there. Tammy, I was supposed to send you a picture for when I was walking today and I forgot... When Bible, when I get back home and I'm going to say, Tim, I didn't know you were here, baby girl. Listen, casting and caring. I see it. Casting and caring. Casting and caring. I like y'all jumping. I didn't know you up in here, Jay. What up, Jay? He cares. I don't care how imperfect we are tonight. He still cares. Let me, let me tell y'all something that no preacher may not have told you. It just came to me as an IR, instant revelation. My behavior and your behavior does not disqualify us from God caring. Woo! 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 Let me, let me say that again. Your behavior, my bad behavior, your bad behavior does not disqualify us from God caring. Woo! 
your sins and my sins cannot cancel. Cannot cancel. God can. Hey, Becky, I didn't know you were here tonight. Oh, I needed this tonight. Cast it. Cast that net wide, preacher man. Listen, our sins, our behavior, our imperfection does not disqualify us from God caring about us. God caring about us is not contingent upon our behavior. Peter denied Jesus three times, but he still loved him. He tells Peter in John 21, you remember I preached that post-resurrection, Simon Barjona, lovest thou me? Yes, I do, Lord. Then feed my sheep. Jesus loved Peter, cared about Peter so much. After he denied him three times, cut a man's ear off, cursed a little girl out, that he made him the head of the church. Peter became the titler head of the church in Jerusalem. It wasn't James. It wasn't John who preached on the day of Pentecost. It was Peter that when he opened the doors of the church, 3,000 people joined. He cares. He cares. I need, I, I want to do some, I want you to do a self affirmation for me right now. I need all of y'all who are in Bible study tonight. I need you to type on that screen. God cares about me. Come on, put it on the screen. God cares about me. You see what happens the devil, the devil plays in your mind and makes you think your behavior has disqualified you from God's care coverage. God's care. That's a new word I want you to put in your spiritual lexicon tonight. God's care courage. Tammy T. Lee, God cares about you. Yes, he does. Tammy, God cares about you, but I don't. <laughs> now, you know I'm joking. Bernice, God cares about me. Becky, God cares about me. Marguerite, God cares about me. Deaconess Hamill Clayton, God cares about me. Deaconess Allison, God cares about me. Rachel, God cares about me. Jermon, God cares about me. Let me tell y'all tonight, quit allowing the devil to make you think you are disqualified because of your behavior. Let me say that again. Quit letting the devil, quit letting the devil make you think that God is disqualified. My barber just put it. God cares about me. Please go Hamilton. Please go Braves. Please go Falcons. Listen, listen. Quit allowing your bad mistakes to make you think that you've been disqualified for God to care about you. Quit letting the devil make you think your bad habits, habits have made God disqualified caring about you. Now, God may put you in time out. God may discipline you. God may whip you, but you haven't been disqualified. Woo, woo. Somebody put on the screen tonight. I'm still in the game. Woo. Somebody put on the screen tonight. I'm still in the game. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody put on the screen. I'm still in the game. You're still in the game tonight because God cares about you. You're still winning because God cares about you. You're still prevailing because God cares about you. Tammy T. Lee, I'm still in the game. You're still surviving because God cares about you. Woo! Still in the game, Jackson. Still in the game, Odister. Still in the game, Bryant. Still in the game, Hamilton. Still in the game, Danner, Scott. Still in the game, Clayton. Andrew's still in the game. Marguerite, are you on vacation in Florida? Are you on vacation? Because I think you all went out of town in Florida. Where's my sweet Rhonda? Where's my baby girl, Rhonda? Let, but chair, I'm still in the game. Quit. Quit. Let me help you tonight. Quit disqualifying yourself when God hasn't disqualified you. Woo! 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 I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, quit disqualifying you when God has not disqualified you. I said, that's what like a bulldog quarterback. Oh, oh, look at you, Becky, trying to suck up to me with my George Bulldogs. Seven more Saturdays, we'll have football in Athens. Listen, quit allowing you to disqualify yourself because God hadn't. Oh, Marguerite, you don't get smart at me and say running out in your pocket. You hater, you hater. Marguerite, choke on that hater aid. <laughs> Give my love. And my kisses to Rhonda. Them walking girls. Listen. Quit. Go dogs, Melissa. Go dogs. Listen. 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 <laughs> yeah, Ram will be a biblical reference. But Becky, 
The quarterback that won the Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford, was a Georgia Bulldog who plays for the Rams. Listen, quit disqualifying yourself when God has not disqualified you. Now, I'm going to really hit you in the eyes. I'm going to hit you right between the eyeballs right now. Quit allowing other people to tell you you are disqualified when God hasn't disqualified you. Woo! 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 You got a good memory for an old lady, Becky. Hey, James Emerson, Frat, where are you from, uh, Brother Emerson? Where are you from? Quit allowing other people to disqualify you when God has not disqualified you. Quit allowing other people to disqualify you when God has not. The only qualification who matters is God. The only qualifier is God. Somebody type on the screen tonight, the only qualifier is God. Now, that don't mean I have a license to go act like an idiot. That doesn't mean I have a license to go act cray cray. That doesn't mean I have the license to go risk my life. No, 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 no. The only qualifier is God. <laughs> Becky said I picked, <coughs> Becky said I picked door number three. Becky, this is not Bob Barker. Let's make a deal. But let's spin it on wheel. Let's spin it on wheel. That's right. But Cherry, you got it. God is the only qualifier. Quit letting people Define your life. God defines your life. I only think, okay, yeah, all right. Gavin, 92, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 Emerson. Yeah, what's going on, man? Where are you now, Emerson? Where are you now? So, so, so God is the only qualifier. Peter is speaking from personal experience because if you went by the social norms and mores, after Peter denies Jesus three times, he should have been disqualified. After Peter cursed the little girl out around the fire, he should have been disqualified. When Peter said he never knew Jesus, at least, well, my argument theologically is that Peter's infractions are worse than James, Judas. Judas told, uh, told who Jesus was to get paid. Peter said, I never knew him. Now, even after Peter denies his Savior, he makes him the title head of the church in Jerusalem. San Antonio, okay. I have, I've been to Dallas, I've been to Houston. In fact, the Alpha National Convention next summer is in Dallas. Never been to San Antonio, Brother James. Listen, 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 listen. Peter is not speaking based on what somebody told him. He's spoken what he has lived. The seasoned saints of yesteryear would say, it happened to me, let me tell it. So, so, so Peter says, cast all of your cares on God because he cares about you. So the best way you can pay God back for caring about you is to care more about yourself. Woo, woo, woo. How many other folk have you put in front of the line in front of you? How much of you has been sacrificed so somebody else can make it? Self-care is the most important care. Whether you agree with Darwin's Charles Darwin's species theory that the or not one thing I like about Darwin is when he says the first law of preservation is self-preservation. I use this example uh, Sunday morning in my sermon. I told you no matter what airline you're flying, of course Delta's for me because this is our hub here in Atlanta. No matter what airline you're flying, no matter where you're flying in the world, you can be going to South Africa, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Charles de Gaulle in Paris, Schiphol in Amsterdam, Bogota, uh, it doesn't matter where you're flying to. They told you, in the, the first thing they say to you, they say, in case of a loss of cabin pressure, put your mask on first. How many of you have, have put somebody else's mask on first and you got hurt in the process? Woo! Woo! Becky said, inspire me so much tonight, I might end up walking on the water myself. Well, go out there and join Jesus and Peter as the three who walked on the water now. So you, if you don't put your mask on the airplane first, you can't help nobody else. How many of you have sacrificed so much of you? Some of you are retired and you use your retirement money to take care of a family member who just sorry, just sorry, just sorry. So what happens here? What happens? You've got to help God by taking care of yourself. 
Take care of your mind. Take care of your body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Woo! Woo! God doesn't like dwelling in no junk. Take care of your mind. Brother Emerson, maybe one day I'll be as good as you. I'm just trying to teach this Bible study. To take care of your body. Take care of your health. Eat better. Exercise. Walk. Run. Scuba dive. Ride a bicycle. Walk your neighborhood. So, so, so if God cares about me, I ought to take better care of myself. Woo! Woo! Quit putting so much in other people that you have little of you left. Woo! Let me tell you this. Great investments have great returns. Good investments have good returns. Bad investments have bad returns. Woo! Let me say that again. We're talking about self-care. We're talking about self-care. Great investments have great returns. Good investments have good returns. Bad investments have bad returns. Who, I don't want you to ask, answer this question. This is rhetorical. This is rhetorical. This is Socratic. This is not to be answered out loud on the screen. It's to be answered silently in your home, wherever you watch me from your car. This, this is the question I ask you tonight. What do your investments look like? Woo! 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 What do your investments look like tonight? I'm not talking about the stock market. Because, Lord, no, I've lost some money in the stock market, but it's going to bounce back. I ain't moved nothing out of my stock market. In a bad time like this, buy gold because gold is able to sustain the market. Listen, listen, listen. Great investments have great returns. Good investments have good returns. Bad investments have bad returns. But guess here's some good news for you. Even if you've made bad investments, you can end that tonight. Woo! Even if you've made bad investments in the past, you can make great investments tonight. Woo! You can change your portfolio tonight. Somebody type on the screen, I'm flipping my portfolio tonight. Woo! Woo! I'm flipping my portfolio tonight. I'm flipping. 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 My portfolio tonight. Woo, woo, woo. I'm flipping. Come on, come on. Get it on the screen. I'm flipping. <laughs> Becky says I'm flipping out. Becky, you just a mess. Becky, you a whole mess. <laughs> I'm flipping my portfolio tonight. Rachel, I'm flipping it. Melissa, I'm flipping it. Becky, are you flipping it or are you flipping out? <laughs> Which one? Which one? <laughs> Listen. Tammy, I'm flipping it tonight. Tammy, I'm going to send you that picture. Let me help y'all tonight. Just because you're in something bad doesn't mean you got to stay in something bad. Woo! Somebody missed that tonight. Somebody missed that tonight. Just listen, listen to me. Just because you're in something bad doesn't mean you got to stay in something bad. Just because you're in something bad tonight doesn't mean you got to say you can flip that thing tonight. You can you can flip that portfolio tonight. You can flip it. Woo! When you begin to flip, the anxiety comes down. Woo! 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 When you begin to flip that portfolio, the anxiety comes down. Anxiety weighs the mind down. Anxiety weighs the emotions down. Anxiety impacts the thinking process. A anxiety can strangle the life out of your situation and you. Peter says, cast. We got to stop at 8 o'clock. Peter says, cast all of your cares. All. Whatever your all is tonight, unload it. Unload it. I need five of y'all to type on the screen tonight. I'm unloading tonight. Come on, come on, come on. I'm unloading tonight. 
I'm unloading tonight. I'm unloading. Hey, Sheree up in Jersey City, New Jersey. My cousin, Sheree, how are you, Sheree? Come on, somebody type on the screen. I'm unloading tonight. I'm unloading tonight. I'm unloading tonight. I'm unload. Rachel, I'm unloading tonight. I'm Dr. Walker, I'm unloading tonight. Dr. Johnson, I'm unloading tonight. Clayton, I'm unloading tonight. J Jamon, I'm unloading tonight. Sharon Williams Jackson, I'm unloading tonight. Tammy T. Lee, I'm unloading tonight. The quicker you unload, the better you're going to feel. Woo! The quicker you unload, the better you are going to feel. Hey, Carrie, Carrie, you still playing hopscotch down in Florida or are you back in Denver? The quick Melissa Dana Scott, I'm unloading tonight. I don't want y'all to type these Lejeune cans. I'm unloading tonight. Eureka, I'm unloading tonight. Eureka, thank you for your offering to the church last week. I didn't even know you were in worship. Listen, the longer you hold on to it, the longer your anxiety will last. Let me say that again. The longer you hold on to it, the longer your anxiety will last. Two things you need to do tonight. Flip the, flip the portfolio and unload the anxiety. God is there with open arms. Wait on you to unload. Woo, woo, woo. I said God is there waiting tonight for you to unload. Oh, Bernice, I'm unloading tonight. I'm unloading tonight. I'm unloading. So we wrap up. Peter says, the way you handle anxiety from the spirit side, remember, I'm not talking about the medicinal side. I use the medicinal to open up. I gave you statistics about the number of Americans who have anxiety and the 43.2% who do not get uh, die, go get treatment. I'm, tell, I'm, I'm telling you from a spiritual side, if you need a medicinal, do not be afraid to talk to a psychiatrist. Do not be afraid to talk to a psychologist. Peter says, cast all of your anxieties on God, on him, because he cares about you. God is pulling for you tonight. Jesus is pulling for you tonight. The Holy Spirit is cheering you on tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, change our portfolio tonight. Flip our portfolio. Jesus, tonight, we give all of our anxiety to you. Ain't anxiety about our children, anxiety about our health, Anxiety about our finances. Anxiety about our relationships. Anxiety about retirement. Anxiety about decision making. Anxiety about money. Anxiety about inflation. And anxiety about politics. Anxiety about decision making process. We give it all to you tonight. We unload tonight. We cast tonight. All of us in Bible study tonight. We're in the casting business. We get it off our back and into your hands. We're taking this and that and all of this and all of that and we're casting in your hands. Thank you tonight that Peter, who survived his anxiety, wrote to the church, the dias diasporic Jews who were scattered abroad. He says, cast all of your anxiety. Peter, who you rescue from his own anxiety. Rescue us tonight from our anxiety. Rescue us from the things that make us uncomfortable. The things that make us doubt. The things that aggravate and agitate us. Rescue us tonight. We cast. We thank you that Peter says. You care about us. Thank you that you care. About Becky. That you care about the Miles. The Claytons. The Cannington's. The Tobers. The Lees. The Andrews. Everybody that's watching. That you care about us. That's the best thing we got going for us tonight. In an uncertain world, we have the certainty that you care about us. In a sometimes dark world, you care about us. In a sometimes demonic world, you care about us. Sometimes in a brutal, cold, and cruel, callous world, you care about us. And we praise you for that tonight. Let us make great investments so we can get great returns. In your name, all of us shouted, amen. 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 I want to thank each of you 
for participating in the Bible study tonight. I want to thank each of you for being here tonight, hearing the word of God. This was a life-changing, altering Bible study. Uh, get, gives you a roadmap, gives me a roadmap how to deal with our anxiety. Cast it. Get that, get that thing out of your hand and cast it to God. Get that stress out of your hand and cast it to God. Get that doubt out of your hand and cast it to God. Get that troubling thing that bothers you so deeply at the core. Shake it off and give it to God. I'm going to ask that you share this Bible study because you, not only can you benefit from it, but others uh, can benefit from it. Others can benefit from it. So we thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching that. I'm going to, I don't know how much long I'm going to preach on this series, but I'm enjoying teaching y'all this, this series on how to deal with your, how to manage your emotions. Part two of dealing with anxiety will come next week. Part two, next Wednesday night, uh, uh, I'll be streaming again uh, for the uh, dealing with anxiety, dealing with anxiety. Can't teach it all in one lesson, but I just focus on verse seven tonight. Uh, cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. I want you, when we sign off tonight, refer, go to your journal. Many of you write journals. Go to your journal and write down how this Bible study will help you manage future anxiety because we're going to have moments of anxiety. Listen, there's a difference between having anxiety and anxiety having you. You can have anxiety, but don't let it have you. Amen, amen. It is offering time. It's offering time. There are three ways in which we give at the Temple of Faith. Uh, the first way we give is by Cash App. Cash App, Augustus Ministry. Please remember Sister Deborah Holloman in prayer. Her mother had to be taken to the hospital as I was going to get my hair cut this morning for my trip tomorrow. Um, post this link when we sign out and the link to donate. Okay, De Deaconess, uh, Deaconess Clayton, put up the uh, the uh, PayPal for her. Put up the pay because Becky over goes PayPal. PayPal is uh, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org online giving, then PayPal. But De I'll post it, uh, Becky, before I put it on, uh, on um, before I post this video to YouTube. But Deborah gave her offering all the way from Milwaukee. I said, look, Miss Bible Study, go take care of your mother. She said, you know, I don't like the Miss Bible Study. I said, Miss Bible Study, uh, go, go take care of your mother. She sent her offering for Bible Study from the, uh, we just pinned the giving on up there. Look under Lucille Hamill Clayton, Deaconess Clayton's name, Becky, you'll see it. De Deborah sent her offering by PayPal, I mean Cash App, from the hospital with her mother. So tonight, there are three ways we give. Cash App, Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Second way we give, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org. Drop down menu, uh, online giving, drop down PayPal. Last way, which I'll give tonight, is by the uh, Giveify app, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Temple of Faith Bible Church. Um, you all remember when we worship at uh, the funeral home in Atlanta, Cascade Chapel, uh, one of the frat brothers called me today and said he found an envelope that was $60 to give. And, and he said, I want to turn that money into the church because I don't know how I end up keeping the envelope. So he wanted me to meet him. I said, no, you can just cash app that. That money, came, $150 came into the church the day before we even got the Bible study. I mean, that's just, and we need that money. But I just praise God for the you all who give, you all who tithe, you all who give offerings. It's a blessing to the church. That's the only way we can make it as a church. Uh, but So let's remember... Uh, Deacon Ness Hodge and her husband in prayer and remember Deborah's mother in prayer as well. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Um, thank you, uh, Becky. Becky, you my uh, unofficial secretary tonight. Deacon Ness Clayton, you've done a marvelous job as the virtual ambassador. You write down stuff and then you uh, then you welcome people all in one breath. You perfected this. I want to thank Milan for teaching you how to do this online. Online. Uh, this Saturday, no street ministry. Dr. Johnson will be in Atlantic City for the NAACP. I will be leaving tomorrow morning on an early 9 o'clock, 9.45 flight to Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Uh, I have to be there in my capacity as a Southern Regional uh, Chaplain for Alpha South as well as executive member of executive leadership team. We're charting a new chapter in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. They actually started yesterday, but I told them I couldn't fly in until tomorrow. Uh, I'll be there and I will be, I will be streaming the sermon from Santo Domingo 
uh, at 9.30 Sunday morning, 9.30. They're in the same time zone, so I don't have to get up early. They're in the actual same time zone as we are in the United States. So I'll be streaming live from Santo Domingo, uh, 9.30, Dominican Republic, um, at uh, 11 or 10, 9.30, 9.30, 9.30. Uh, Fresh Friday prayer call. I will not be on the Fresh Friday prayer call this week. I'm going to ask you all to handle that for me. I'm going to ask you to handle that. I will not be on there, but Fresh Friday prayer call will be 7 o'clock a.m. I'm going to ask our deacon to handle that. Thank you, Becky. Be safe in your travels. Thanks so much for tonight's lesson. Hugs to the entire group. De De Becky, you are such a blessing to our church. We love you. We support you. Becky and I have never met. She bought about 15 copies of my book when I wrote in 2015, Pits and Palaces, Come Overcoming Every Obstacle in Your Life, and she gave to patients at her center. I'll never forget that. Thank you, Rachel. I love you. Rachel, I have to bring you a gift back from the Dominican Republic. Safe travels to my brother. This is going to be your recovery gift. Rachel, how's your knee replacement surgery coming? How's your knee replacement surgery coming? Look, I love you guys. I appreciate you. What well, this Bible study really got me up tonight. I mean, I'm just, woo! I'm woo! I'm woo, 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 woo. Love you back. Love all of you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Melissa, I saw online where you all celebrate your mother's birthday some time ago. Tell your mother I said happy belated birthday. Rachel, are you able to go back to work yet? Are you able to go back to work? I'm glad it's getting better. We praise God that Rachel's knee is getting better. We're going to go home old school. I need you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. May the Lord. Watch between. Very good, Rachel. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Okay. Who am I going to get to say bye to here? Thank you, Rachel. Um, thank you, uh, Melissa. Good night, Tammy. And thank you for the safe travel. Tammy, when I get back to Atlanta, I will send you the picture that I forgot to send you when I was walking today. Okay. So glad to have Tammy back. She's been traveling because of her job. All right. Good night. I love you guys.